Fiber friends, how are you today? It is Wednesday, so it's time for another Wooly Wednesday where I talk about all of my knitting goodness, my yarny and fiber fun, um, all that kind of stuff. So welcome back. Uh, my name is Jessie and this is Miss Lee Pages. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit of a quick and dirty video because I'm, uh, one, I'm filming on my lunch break, and two, <laughs> two, I'm trying to get this knocked out because I have so much I'm trying to get done today. Um, as usual, my plans are not going to plan. Um, so, <laughs> um, I think the biggest lesson for me this year so far is to just slow down and things will happen in the time that they happen because... Um, it seems that no matter how well I plan or what I try to get done, um, I keep coming up against obstacles, and so, yeah. Um, this week the biggest thing is sinus headaches, migraines, and uh, wisdom tooth pain, so yay. Um, I had no idea that you could still get wisdom teeth coming in at 40 years old, but apparently you can, and it's super fun, let me tell you. Anyway enough of that. I may talk about that more on Friday in Floss too. We'll see. I'm hoping that I will be in a better, in a better place on Friday. We'll see. Um, it's been improving over the last few days, but it's, the, it's been a struggle. So let's just put it that way. And talking is a little uncomfortable right now. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, it's still a Wooly Wednesday, so um, usually I like to film this on Tuesday, so it's actually, you know, sort of ahead. <laughs> uh, but today it actually is Wednesday. <laughs> so, um, as far as whips, um, of course I'm still working on my, um, Sharon Show MCAL. Um, so I, I don't really have any more than I had last week. Um, so quick spoiler alert, I'm going to show you, um, stitching through... The first section of clue three so if you don't want to see that um, avert your eyes now um, and I will tell you you will see um, I have not gotten much farther than I was last week so my stitch marker is right here um, you can see I've gotten I think this is two more repeats on this section um, and I still have no actually it's two full repeats and a partial I still have two full repeats left to do um, I didn't stretch this out because you, it's not much different than you saw it last week. This section, honestly y'all, this section is killing me. Um, this is probably my least favorite section of this shawl thus far. Part of it is because it's just so time consuming. Um, I've been working on this section and granted I've had some, I've had some setbacks and issues and stuff so I haven't been working on it like hardcore, but I've been working on this section, excuse me, for two weeks. And I'm still just only like halfway done. I'm so tired of this particular stitch. Um, part of the problem is too, I've had to tink twice. Um, so for those of you new to knitting, tinking is when you, uh, you realize that you have a mistake. So you actually knit backwards, you unknit, um, which is why they call it tinking because tink is literally knit backwards. Um, <clears throat> so you unknit, um, you know, part or all of a row. Um, there are other ways that you can actually get back. So let's say, let's say I had made a mistake way down here and I wanted to rip out all of these stitches, I could actually put in a safety line. Um, if I wanted to, I could put in a safety line as I go so that then I could just rip things back to that line. Um, but I'm, I'm not here for that. <laughs> That's way too much work. But this section, as you can see, the, the eyelets here are meant to line up in sort of a diamond pattern. So if you get a stitch off, it's really, really obvious. And a couple of these I've noticed um, as I got to the opposite end that I had made a mistake in the front. And so I actually have taken the time to tank back um, to fix that mistake. So um, it's taken a lot longer than it should have. Um, it's not a difficult stitch, but this it's a K3 pass is what they call it. Um, and though it's not difficult, it's really easy to get um, off count. So. Yeah, so it's it's been a challenge, um, and as much as I like the way this stitch looks, this is this has been murder. Okay, focus there. Um, it's been murder. So anyway, so that's where I am. I'm still in the first section of clue three. Um, clue five dropped a week ago Friday. Clue six will drop this Friday. Focus. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> so clue six is the last clue. I'm hoping to catch up a little bit more, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> that's where I am with that. Let me just put this back together so it will be safe. And, um, and then I will tell you that it's safe to look. <laughs> uh, pardon me while I struggle for just a second. But if I don't put this away while I'm chatting with you, then it's going to be, it's going to take me so much more time after I get off the video. So bear with me for just a second. Oh, okay. So in addition to that, um, because I wasn't feeling well, because that is such a challenge, um, I did get some more work in on, oh, you can look again now, <laughs> if you don't want spoilers for the MCAL, I'm done. Um, I did get some work in on my Empower People Shawl, and as you can see, I actually got a fair bit of progress on this. Um, so I had almost six inches from this point to the marker, uh, right about six inches, and I now have about 10 inches total. So I need this, I need, this is the neckline, so I need the neckline to be about 18 inches before I start sewing the seaming, or start stitching the seaming edge. Um, and so what will happen is that um, this edge will continue up until about 18 inches, I might do 20 depending, and then um, instead of continuing the increase, I'll actually just um, start stitching the same number of stitches for, um, for about 2 inches or so to create a flat edge. And then when I have that flat edge, I'll take that and I'll wrap it around. Okay, I'm going to get everything tangled here. I'll wrap it around to this flat edge and then sew those together. And actually, this is this is about the right size if you wanted a pet bandana. <laughs> so if I wanted to make this for Momo, this would be about the right size. Um, but for a person, I need a little bit longer. So, um, so yeah, once I have a flat edge on this end, I'll sew the two flat edges together and then I'll be able to wear it. Um, if you're following Rachel at Rachel Ray, um, you have already seen what a finished bandana looks like. I think Michelle Bendy might have also finished hers. I can't remember if she has actually sewn in her ends and sewn it together yet, but I think she's finished knitting it or she's very close. So yeah, so this will ultimately be like a cowl type situation. Um, so it'll be sewn together and I'll just be able to slip it over my head. I might be able to use it as a bandana, but I find that um, often my head is either misshapen or the wrong size for that kind of stuff to work. It won't stay, like I can't wear headbands and stuff. It's really weird. Anyway, but yeah, I'll probably use it as an actual cowl I'll pull it down over my neck so um and even though I really hate knitting with this yarn this is a um a knit crate yarn um it looks really nice and it's actually very soft um but I don't like how the Stellina is um is really choppy so the Stellina sticks out and makes it it gives it kind of a fuzzy appearance which is not my favorite um also this yarn splits like you would not believe it's ridiculous um, so knitting with it, especially because um, I'm out of size six nickel needles, so I'm using these wooden ones, um, which are great for certain things. But when you want stuff to slide really well, these these will they have a little bit more um, tooth. Is that what? I, uh, um, regard drag. They have a little bit more drag. So this is great if you're trying to make socks and stuff where you don't want the stitches to slip too easily. But on this particular yarn, I want it to slip more easily than it is. But I'm, I'm out of metal needles. So too many whips. Regardless, uh, this is a little bit more than halfway done or maybe right at halfway done. So, um, and that's just a, I think that's just an hour or two of knitting um, here and there. So this is a much simpler um, stitch because you're literally just knitting back and forth. Um, you don't even use purl stitches, or at least my version doesn't use purl stitches. The actual um, pattern calls for purl stitches, but um, it wasn't turning out the way I wanted it. Um, it didn't turn out looking right the way that I was doing it, so I have modified the pattern in my own way, in my own special way, so that it, it does what I want it to do. So uh, that's what I have worked on. Uh, I had hoped to be able to show you my start on the mixtape MCAL, um, but plans, yeah. So um, I'm hoping that by this time next week I'll have something to show you. The first pattern dropped on Monday. Um, I have read through it. It is kind of intense for a first week. Um, there's 
almost no way I'm going to get all of that done in one week. Even if I had started first thing on Monday, it probably wouldn't be done. Um, <clears throat> also, I haven't caked up my yarn yet, so nothing's happening until I cake up the yarn. <laughs> um, maybe later today. Um, at the moment, I feel like I'm living in chaos. Um, projects that I was working on last week that I set aside so I could do other stuff are just are lingering. Um, it, not behind me. Well, some of it is behind me. Not ugh. Directionally challenged. Um, this, the, okay. I give up. The the blue and silver stuff over my shoulder. This shoulder <laughs> um, is part of the explosion of things from projects I was working on last week, and I just. I haven't had a chance to finish those things up so I can put those things away. Um, we're still in the process. We're in the, the, like we're in so close to the final stages of getting the craft room together so I can start moving in. I'm really hoping that before the end of October, not before the end of, before the end of September, um, because we're planning on going on vacation in October. I'm hoping before we go on vacation that we'll actually get the floor completely finished and I can actually start moving things in because that will take so much stress off of me if I can start getting my craft stuff organized and feel like I have space to breathe. Right now I feel like I am trapped um, and everything is an avalanche. <laughs> so anyway, you can't even see the stuff that's driving me crazy. It's off to the side here. You can kind of see, you can kind of see a kitty. It's a Momo laying next to me. Um, but on the table over here, just out of sight, is where all the chaos is, and it's making me crazy. Okay. So, yeah, I still need to cake up my yarn for the mixtape MCAL. Um, hopefully, I will maybe do that today. Maybe. If not today, hopefully tomorrow. I'm going to start before the end of the weekend. So... Um, I'm getting to that place where I'm, I'm having a little bit more energy and a little bit more capacity to do stuff, but what happens is that my mind starts going crazy and I want to do all the things at the same time. So trying to get myself to focus and just do one thing at a time and not freak out is difficult. <laughs> um, and then on top of that, still the wisdom tooth pain. So life is interesting. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's it for whips. Um, that's some of my plans. I will talk about more of my plans here in just a second, but first I'm going to talk about, um, purchases. So I have received a couple of things, uh, that I purchased a little while ago. Um, not too much, uh, but I have received a couple of things. Um, the Haunted Mansion Advent, uh, will be here soon. She did have a slight snag, um, because most of the West Coast ran into what is definitely not a slight snag. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sure all of you are aware, or at least those of you living in the States are aware, the West Coast is having, like the entire West Coast is having a horrible time with wildfires right now. And um, even though um, Rebel Woolworks is in Oregon, Obviously, you know, we are, we're all breathing the same air, and so that smoke wafts through the entire country, and because they're so close um, to everything that's happening, um, she did have a few days where they literally had to strap some um, air filters to the, the outside air intake and things like that just to keep themselves safe. Um, and because of that, she had nowhere that she could safely dry the yarn where it wouldn't get smoke and soot and that kind of stuff in it. Um, so she took a couple of days, rightly so, um, to protect herself and her family um, and not worry about trying to get the yarn dyed and dried. Um, you know, and when I saw those posts, I was like, please, don't worry about getting this stuff out. You need to keep yourself safe. Uh, keep yourself safe. Keep your family safe. The yarn will wait. We will all wait for the yarn because if you're not here to dye it, because you got sick from smoke inhalation, that would be far worse than if I have to wait an extra week for yarn. You know, it's that simple. Um, so she took the time she needed. I think she's back up and running because I think that the air quality has improved. Um, I'm not keeping too much tab on that just because that's her. As long as she's staying safe, that's all that matters to me. Um, so that will hopefully be here next week, um, depending on air quality and things like that. Um, a, an additional note about the wildfires, um, you know, I know a lot of people are in danger, a lot of people are suffering right now, so my heart goes out to all of you, um, 
if any of my viewers are in that area, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Um, it's, I mean, it was, it was awful when it was across the world in Australia. It's, it's awful here at home too. So, um, and I hear that even though I'm on the East coast and literally on the opposite side of the country, uh, we've also had some issues with, with the smoke getting all the way over here. So that's how bad it is. Um, there was apparently haze and, and smoke and stuff in DC, which is not far from me. Um, <clears throat> I haven't noticed a significant change in our air quality here, but that doesn't mean that there isn't. Um, so yeah, everybody, I hope you're staying safe. Um, my heart goes out to the folks that are, that are suffering right now in the many and varied ways. Um, so yeah, it's rough and I'm sorry. Um, so yeah. That is that is that on uh, Rebel War Rebel Woolworks and the Haunted Mansion um, advent. So that will be coming. Um, but yeah, I have gotten other purchases though. So um, I mentioned last time that I made an order with um, Ruby and Roses. Um, she has now moved from Etsy to her very own website, which is awesome. Um, this is something you see a lot with folks that start out on Etsy and then they eventually graduate to their own website. It's sort of like <clears throat> the way I view it is sort of like the baby steps into being a maker um, and to earning a living on that making is Etsy because it makes it easier for you in a lot of ways. They do a lot of advertising for you. They have a platform already set up and that sort of thing. And then once you get strong enough <laughs> as, a, um, as a maker and a seller, um, then you move to your own website so that you can save some money because there's so many fees. <laughs> but yeah, so she now has her own website. Congratulations, Madison. That's super awesome. Um, and uh, I haven't purchased from the website yet because I actually made these purchases from Etsy right before she transitioned um, but she is now in her own website I have changed that in the link haven so make sure that if you're interested in Ruby and Roses you actually use that new link in the link haven to go directly to her website and purchase from her she's not selling through Etsy anymore um, <clears throat> so one of the things I purchased was um, her one and only Halloween themed colorway um, and as I understand it, she doesn't care much for Halloween, so she said this was the only colorway she'd be doing for for Halloween. <laughs> and I can sympathize. I'm not hugely into Halloween. Um, I like a lot of the colors that come with Halloween, but I am not one of those folks that's just like Halloween. Um, the, if I'm if I'm big about any particular holiday or season, it's autumn slash Thanksgiving um, and not Thanksgiving in the Indians and Pilgrims kind of way because I have some complicated feelings with that but Thanksgiving in the way that um, my family celebrated it through the years um, because for us it was very much a gathering of family and time spent close together enjoying each other's company and, and all that kind of stuff so it's a very particular thing um, because of the traditions in my family that has very little to do with a lot of the other stuff but anyway autumn is my absolute favorite season so everything autumnal is me though I'm not a pumpkin spice person um, I'm an apple cider person just for the record anyway regardless <laughs> Halloween colorway <laughs> so this is the only colorway Addison planned on doing for uh, for Halloween um, and it's called witching hour and it's really really gorgeous Look, oh my gosh I love this I really really love it it's got gray and pink and purple a little bit of blue and you can even see some yellow and stuff sort of in this area and even a little bit of green it's got all the colors here but primarily it's like purple and pink and gray I really really love it and this is her rose gold base so I think you can see it it's got just a little bit of sparkle from that Stellina so her rose gold base is a 75-25 mix. So 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina. So it's got just enough Stellina to make it sparkly, but not so much that I feel like it's going to bother me like it does in that, um, with that Knit Crate yarn. And that Knit Crate yarn is like 20% Stellina or something like that. It's got a ton more Stellina. So I think this is going to make me happier. It's also really soft. Um, and because it's got that nylon in there, it's going to be um, pretty durable, I think. So you can tell it's kind of stretchy. So I'm really excited about this. I have no idea what I'll use it for, but it's, <laughs> but it's really pretty and I like it. I like it so much. I'm so happy with that. I also got um, yet another set of minis because... <laughs> 
Um, it, I wouldn't be me if I didn't collect minis. Um, I just realized before I was getting stuff together for the video, I have a whole bag that's just minis. A full bag of yarn that's just minis. And I can't wait to get the craft room set up because one of the first things I'm going to do is put all the yarn in pretty white cube shelving so you can see all the yarn behind me when I film because color. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, this is one of um, this is one of Madison's um, newest sets or newer sets, mini sets, and um, and I got this because I just love the colors and um, even though I love bright colors and I know y'all have seen me get a lot of bright colors. Um, in yarn. I also like rich muted tones. Is that an oxymoron? Rich muted? Um, I like rich tones that are more earthy? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I like I like lots of different colors. So this has, um, and this has a lot of different tones that she doesn't normally do in her colorways, which I like. Um, so this first one is really nice. This is actually a regular colorway that she's been doing for a while. This is called Whispering Pines. Let's see if I can hold that up so you can actually see the tag. Whispering Pines. And this is actually um, Addison. I called her Madison, didn't I? Addison, I apologize. Um, Addison um, has been doing Whispering Pines for a while and I think this is actually, she said on her her Knitcast uh, podcast that this is one of her favorite colorways, which I agree with her. I like the the nice earth tones there, the foresty feeling. It's really nice. And there's this pretty gray. This colorway is called Mirror, which is really nice. And then this is sort of a coppery brown. It's coming off more red on camera. Um, but it's also called Lucky Penny, which I think is appropriate for the color. Because in person, this is a little bit more muted, and it does look a little bit like a closer to a fresh penny kind of color. Almost a rusty, not quite. Um, this one is really nice. This is a speckled gray. Reminds me a little bit of the uh, Video Killed the Radio Star colorway from Paisley Pearl. Um, this is called Vinyl Record. This is obviously different because it's a browner, warmer gray. And you also have like dark speckles versus the neon speckles that uh, Video Killed the Radio Star has. So this has got some of those tones that we've already seen in these others. Um, it's got a little bit of red, some deep blue. It does have a little pop of yellow right there that's like the neon yellow. <laughs> um, really nice. And then this is my favorite of the, the mini skein set. This is a beautiful color. It's coming off really, really blue. It's actually closer to teal. Um, it's a blue-green kind of color. And this is called Persian. And this is actually, like I said, this is my favorite of this mini skein set. I really love this color. So this is really, really awesome. I'm very happy with these. <clears throat> I am always, you know me, I'm a huge fan of mini skeins. Anytime anybody puts a mini skein set together, I'm going to buy it. Um, I think she's got at least one other, actually she has several mini skein sets going on right now. Um, but I think there's at least one other color set that I'm interested in getting. Um, we'll see if I purchase it. I I need more mini skeins like I need holes in the head, right? I mean, <laughs> like, oh my goodness, y'all. I will say, um, actually I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, no, I can talk about it now. So um, one of the things that I'm planning on doing in the future, another you know, another pattern I'm planning on doing. Um, so the Sharon Show will have a Sharon Show 2. <laughs> um, people have already um, expressed so much interest for another Sharon Show MCAL that, um, that Casapinka and Sharon from Security have decided that they will do a second one. Um, this one will be smaller. Um, and it will be significantly different. First of all, it's gonna be a cowl instead of a shawl. And second of all, you'll be able to use variegated and scraps and whatever. So um, as I understand it, you'll be able to use any number of colors from one color to what, however many colors you want to use. Um, so what I plan on doing is using a whole bunch of mini skeins. <laughs> because I have mini skeins. <laughs> so I'm gonna do um, a crazy color cowl that will be all the different mini
these canes that I feel like will fit together. Um, so yeah, definitely, um, almost definitely the Seaside um, mini skein set that I got from um, from Addison at Ruby and Roses, um, and then the pink mini skeins that I got from Vicki Brown, and um, probably not these mini skeins because these are sort of different tonally than um, those other mini skeins, um, but probably some of the Songbird mini skeins that I got from Ruby and Roses, and then other various random mini skeins. <laughs> Um, all the mini skeins will go into the NM cow. <laughs> all more details on that soon. They haven't posted them yet, but I'm definitely going to get in on that one because it's a great use of mini skeins. Um, speaking of uses of mini skeins, um, I mentioned uh, probably a couple of times that I have found an awesome pattern that I want to use um, for, I don't remember if I specifically said what yarn I want to use, but if you recall, a while ago, I purchased these fantastic, oh, and the glare is going to get me. I'll try to post a picture of them. <laughs> I'll put a picture of them here because you're not, you can't see the beautiful colors. Anyway, this is my mini skein set from Rebel Woolworks. The very first yarns I ever purchased from Rebel Woolworks. Um, so I saw this new pattern and um, I knew immediately that I needed to get it so that I could use these mini skeins in it. So this is the primary part of the new pattern. The other parts of the pattern, um, the other colors I'll be using, are two more skeins that I bought from Rebel Woolworks and I did talk about these. Um, this is graphite. So this is a nice dark gray. And I'm actually really happy to see that, um, I think you can tell. So the gray that came with the mini skein set is actually just slightly lighter than the large skein of graphite. Um, so I think that'll work out nicely. I can use both of those um, <clears throat> as different colors. Um, I can use the, the lighter gray as a contrasting color. But this will be the main color of the shawl. Um, or not the shawl, of the... Um, the cowl, and I'll tell you what it is. This is a superwash merino, 70% uh, and 30% nylon. So yeah, that's graphite. And then this I'm going to use for one of the contrasting colors because I didn't have enough contrasting colors. This is called Montana Rainbow Ruck. Look at that. Look at that. Can you not? I mean, oh my gosh. So this is so gorgeous and it's trying to come out of its, its thing here. Try not to let it fall out of the loop here. Look at all the colors. Look at that. It is fantastic. Not only is it rainbow, but it's like a whole different rainbow than I already have in my rainbow mini skein set. So this is going to be fantastic. So this will be one of the contrasting colors. And then, okay, there we go. I just want to make sure it doesn't come unwound before I'm ready for it to unwind. <laughs> okay, and now you can see a little bit more of that orange. How gorgeous is that? Uh, but anyway, so this will be one of the contrasting colors, and then these will be the rest of the contrasting colors, and then this will be the main. So let me see. You know I try to hold these up, and then it never works. So, <laughs> so, these are all the colors, and let me shift this way slightly. These are all the colors I'm going to use, and I'm going to put the pattern up to that side. <laughs> Directionally challenged. Um, so the pattern that I'm going to be using is the sun, sun strip, sun stripe. I knew I'd forget it before I actually talked about it. Um, anyway, the picture has the name of it. <laughs> it's another pattern, a brand new pattern from Re, um, Remade by Hand. Um, so if you remember, I talked about um, a pattern that's coming up from them after they do the test knits, or she does the test knits, um, or gets the test knitting done. This is one that she just released. So it's all tested, it's official and ready to go. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. So as you can see, it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome with these colors. I mean, I've got this fantastic rainbow happening, and then there will be a couple of stripes of this um, this beautiful rainbow rock. I think this is gonna be this is gonna be super awesome. I'm super excited, so excited. So yeah, um, I won't be starting this quite yet because, as I said, I have a whole lot of projects um, already, <laughs> 
And as excited as I am now that I have all this yarn, um, I, I need to get something off my plate before I start yet another thing, um, especially because I'm getting ready to cast on the mixtape MCAL already and I haven't finished the Sharon show. So um, something has got to give. So this is this has got to wait a little while, but I have all the bits and pieces for it now. I've already purchased the pattern. I'm super excited. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern, and I think it's going to be awesome. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's all my plans. That's all the purchases. Um, that's everything for this week, I think. So um, as I said, hopefully I will have the mixtape shawl or the mixtape cowl started for you uh, by the time we talk next week. Hopefully I'll have more progress on the Sharon shawl, the Sharon show shawl, um, and yeah. So, um, that's it. <laughs> I went a little bit longer than I thought I would, um, but it's funny because I think once I get talking, then I forget that I'm in pain and, um, you know, so I guess that's good. <laughs> it's another benefit of doing these videos. Um, so anyway, I hope you all are well, uh, wherever you are. I hope you're safe. Um, I hope that you're staying, um, staying healthy and that you're taking care of yourself. And, uh, I hope you're having a great day. Have a good one, everyone. See you next.